lot. Joining me now is the Industry Science and Technology Minister, Karen Andrews. Karen Andrews, thanks so much for your time. The CSIRO has set out a roadmap here. How much of it will the government adopt? Well, uh, the, the report that is being released today by the CSIRO and also at NAB does set out two scenarios. And let's be clear, they're not, um, they're not uh, predictions, they're not, uh, they don't have a crystal ball, but what they have done is looked at the last couple of years, worked closely with some key organisations, including not-for-profits, and have looked at two scenarios. One is pretty much as steady as she goes with no changes, which would lead to a slow decline. The other is what I would now call the opportunities for Australia, which looks at if we got the economic uh, levers correctly in place, which we are clearly doing as a coalition government, we would have the opportunity to build a very positive agenda for this nation. Now, you've mentioned energy. That's a clear, clear part of it. But uh, the report also looks at a range of other factors. It looks at, uh, it looks at land use. It looks at um, things such as technology. It looks at education. It looks at what the scenarios are going to be to skill our workforce for the future. There are some very positive levers there that, uh, that the government is already starting to, uh, to use and will continue to, to use. So, for example, um, Alan Tudge is doing some great work uh, with our cities. The report from CSIRO and, uh, and NAB and others clearly looks at uh, growth of our cities, the need to look at uh, what they refer to as satellite uh, cities. Mm. And we've got some examples of that happening already in Sydney, where you've got uh, Western Sydney clearly as a satellite part of, um, uh, of Sydney. Now, the report also does talk about uh, housing and the fact that Australia does have relatively low density housing, which means that uh, it does contribute to the urban sprawl, but it feeds into the, the narrative that we need to look at uh, the satellite cities and we need to look at connectivity between those satellite cities and the major metropolitan sure. areas. Sure, okay, that does back in your big infrastructure agenda that you took to the election Certainly quite does. conveniently. Certainly but does. I do want to focus on energy where there's been, you know, a decade where it's been lacking seriously in bipartisanship. Now, this report suggests Australia could reach net zero emissions by 2050. Is that something you would like to see? Look, I'm clearly focused on the, the science. I'm going to work with our Energy Minister, Angus Taylor, to deliver what is in the best interests of Australia. Now, I'm, I'm happy to talk about the elephant in the room, which is coal. We clearly have coal-fired power stations. Now they will be part of our energy mix for some time into the future. But Angus Taylor is also doing some great work looking at what alternatives. So we've been out, he's looking mm. at about, I believe, 12 projects. We're looking at things such as, you know, the, the Snowy 2, which is yep. hydro. Um, I have also announced um, some, uh, some projects that we'll be looking at uh, for future batteries. Uh, sure. We're looking at lithium. But in order to there are achieve range of this net zero emissions mm. by 2050, is the government doing enough at this stage or will there need to be a lot more projects in order to meet what the CSIRO says is achievable? Uh, I think that we have made a very, very good start uh, on that. There's obviously more work that needs to be done. Mm. And what that report is doing is looking uh, from now through until 2060. So it's quite some time into the, the future. The report looks at a couple of things. It talks about um, hydrogen energy, hydrogen yep. fuel cells nuclear? and developing that. What do you think well, about nuclear? Um, well, nuclear has been quite topical, and I know that the uh, Deputy Premier of New South Wales has been out talking recently about opportunities for nuclear um, power. I don't have an issue with it being considered, but I'm currently more focused on looking at things such as um, hydrogen energy, hydrogen fuel cells, and our chief scientist has already been doing a lot of work on that, as has the CSIRO. The CSIRO, and it's mentioned in this report, is also um, doing a lot with uh, methane reduction with, uh, with livestock, looking at future feed, which is based on, on seaweed, which reduces the amount of methane produced from livestock. So there's a lot of things that are happening that are going to play into um, emissions into the future and reducing those emissions. So my role... Yeah is to look at the science and make sure that science is, um, is taken into account when we're looking at policies across a range of areas, including energy. Yeah, it sure is. And to look at the, in the energy space, I mean, 
There's a lot of argument on both sides about whether uh, coal is sustainable, about whether renewables are the future. Do you think renewables could stand on their own two feet without subsidy? And if they can't, when do you think that might be achievable? Yeah. Well, look, um, renewables is, um, is, is an issue that is worthy of debate. It's clearly mentioned in the ANO report, as it should. Mm -hmm. And let's be clear, that deport, report is not intended to be definitive. It is intended to be a discussion starter. So I'm very happy to have those discussions. We all should be having those discussions about what Australia's future looks well, like. What is it? What, what does, does it look, it look like? like, in your view? In, in my view, Australia has an incredibly uh, positive outlook and that's reinforced by a lot of things that are in, in, in that report. There are some challenges. Uh, we are looking at technology, increasing the adoption of technology and one of the things that we announced during the election campaign was the establishment of the okay. Manufacturing Modernisation Fund and that will be looking at making sure that our manufacturing industry is looking at technology so that they can improve their efficiencies and their productivity and that will be what a key driver is of our future. OK, we'll speak soon. We've run out of time this morning. Karen Andrews, thanks so much for your time.